All right. Um, so, God has been teaching me all about giants. <laughs> uh, oh. thing, uh, giants and uh, uh, this uh, verse in First John chapter three, verse one and two. It says. Behold, now we are sons of God. Ooh. Yes. And that, that, it, um, it woke up my heart, my spirit. I was like, whoa, that's awesome that we are seen in his eyes as his children. Yeah. We belong to the almighty God, the one who, who the one who created everything we can see and can't see. He created everything and we belong to him. We are his children. Amen. That's awesome and wonderful. Amen. Right? Amen. Yes. Amen. Your spirit jumping. Yeah. Yeah. My spirit is jumping. <laughs> that makes me feel so good. Special. Special. Important. Value. Precious. I know uh, uh, when we're we're growing up, we uh, try to find who, who am I? You know, and in the word of God, if we are believers in Jesus Christ, we belong to yeah. him, God. Amen. We are his children. Amen. 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 And I know that already. I know yeah. that information already. Yeah. But when I hear it again and again and again, my spirit learns more and it moves me to a new level in the Lord. Yeah. You know, I understand it in a new level. It's like it's, it's clearer. I don't know how, I, I don't know, but my spirit <clears throat> understands it better and better, and I'm just jumping inside, I'm just jumping, amen? Yeah, amen. 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 So, I want to uh, just talk about giants, facing giants in our lives. We have many. Yes. Amen? Amen? Yes. Sometimes we blame Satan uh, for things, but sometimes it's our own desires, hungers, uh, lusts. Sometimes it's, it's me, not Satan. You agree? Yes. yes. You didn't say amen. <laughs> <laughs> Let me try it again. Sometimes it's our own lust, not Satan. Amen. Okay, okay, no, no, no. You have to accept that truth first, then you can be delivered. If you don't accept that as truth, you can't be delivered because right. you're fighting the right. truth. Right. You, can't, you can't fight the truth and expect deliverance. No. You have to know that you need a spiritual doctor. Yeah. Who's the spiritual doctor? Jesus. Jesus Christ. He can deliver. Yeah. He's willing and able to deliver us. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Facing spiritual giants. Now, there are many, many, many uh, giants. 
for women and and for for men and for women. They're the giants of rebellion. Okay, man, they don't want to listen or obey. Sometimes you're just stubborn, like mules. <laughs> not me. Can't can't can't. Will not. <laughs> and the wives, you know, the women are saying, really, really, grow up. <laughs> and women the same, they are rebellious. To the husband, the husband saying, the, the husband says, we should do this and that, and the wife said, do it yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Not submitted. The word of God says the wife should be submissive to the husband, agreeing not, not because the, the husband is, is right all the time, no. To be obedient to God. Now, if the husband is telling the wife that something wrong, you know, wives, no. You don't do that. But, you understand, you submit yourself to the husband. Amen? Amen. Now, in a wife's life, if they're not submissive to the husband, you can believe they're not submissive to God. They're trying to control God. Oh, do this, do that. Trying to run God. I've seen it. Can't do that. God. It's his way, not ours. Amen. 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 So that giant of rebellion in men and women need to yes. And sometimes we have that and We want, you know, control. That's why. Control. You can't control me. Stop. Surrender to God first. There's giants of covetousness. How do I say that? Covetousness, covetousness, covetousness. Ah. I want to buy things. Oh. Your grass is green, greener. Mine is green, yours is greener. Your, your neighbors, everything they have, you want. Oh, they have. Ah. Please, please, controlling, right, right, covetousness, I have, but it's not enough, that's it, I have these things, but it's the but part that's wrong. But it's not enough. Never content. Never content. I must, I must, I must have it. That purse. <laughs> <laughs> I touched 
taste it, I taste it. I'll eat it up. <laughs> oh. Oh. Stop it. Those giants of <laughs> covetous. It's awful. That giant is telling God, you are not good enough. You don't have enough. It's not trusting that God has enough for everyone, every believer. That that the things he has, it never runs out. Never. He has enough. Many times we steal because we believe God doesn't have enough. Wow. We lust and hunger for things. Even though we have one, I have a washer, but I want the best. Now, it's not broken. The one I, I have, not broken, but I want a better one, a new one. No way. That's wrong. Yes. If it's not broken, use it, use it, use it. Leave it, yes. Amen. Amen. You see how those giants, they enter our lives and mm -hmm. The giant of lust, of pleasure. Man, you know that one, right? Cool. I know it. Free. Man, say, we are free. We are free. We are free. Through we are free. <laughs> that giant of lust and pleasure. Many, many men, they're lost so much time because they're on the computer. Lust, lust, porn. Ah. They're lost. They lose so much time because they're on the computer. Porn. They look up and it's a new day. You know, the sun is out. What time? <gasps> I'm late, I'm late, I'm late, late for work. <laughs> because they're lost in the play. The giant of lust should be caring for the kids, but should be caring and loving the wife, but Losing time. Some women do that too. It's awful. Losing your life for picture <coughs> images on the computer you can't have. You have a beautiful wife, but, but, you see that? But I have a beautiful wife, but it's the but. We think it's not enough. It's not enough. And that giant of fear. Oh, I will not go there because will not do this because 
we allow fear to control us. God tells us to do something. We say, no, no, I'm afraid to do that. I'm afraid to share the gospel. afraid to tell other people I Jesus. I'm going to hide it. Hide my light. I'm going to hide it. The word of God says that we believers are the light of the world. We can't hide it. We can't be afraid to show it. people reject the gospel, they're not rejecting you. They are rejecting Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is their life mind. Yeah. But they don't know, not yet. But if you don't go to those deaf people and say, Jesus loves you, die for you. All the things Jesus did for me, that's one person. Maybe that person needs 12 people to show up and share the gospel before they accept Jesus Christ. And it's been five years since the, last, since the last person shared the gospel. Maybe you're the twelfth person God has sent. You are allowing the giant of fear to stop you. The news that you have is important. So important. Death, death, or life. Which, if you don't share the gospel, it's death. If you share the gospel, maybe life. The word of God says, How will they know without a preacher? Yeah. <sighs> You know that when you share your testimony, all the things that God did in your life, you are preaching the good news. That is the good news. I was dead, and now I'm alive. Person to minister to the death.
That's the only thing you have to do. God, the Holy Spirit, does the rest. Amen. It is the Holy Spirit's job to draw the people to God. Right. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Not yours. Your job is easy. You just share what Jesus Christ did for you. That's easy. Right? Right? Stop being afraid. about giants many many more I want to prepare us for studying giants facing the spiritual giants I want to prepare us I want to share about God because without knowing about God, all the things about giants is not important. All right? But when we're facing uh, a giant, we have to remember God is involved. God is in it. Amen? So, let me show you uh, through the story about uh, Moses. How do you guys want me to sign it? Moses or Moses? So, God is our deliverer. He defeated all giants on the earth. And in the heavenly places. Yeah. God has defeated already all the giants. Yeah. So that's the truth. Right. Yeah. We need to know. <clears throat> Remember. Lock it in. God already defeated the enemy. All the giants. God already Amen. That's the truth. Yes, amen. The yes. truth will set you us free. free. Yeah. Amen. 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 The truth is God already defeated them. All right? So Moses, he was walking his own business just focus his own business he he's caring for his sheep okay and the word of God says he led the sheep now look if we think back to the story of Moses he he also led the people of God from Egypt Right? What? Egypt, the people of God, Israel, they were. Now, a few important things. I don't want you to miss it. Okay? So let's look. In Moses' everyday life, he cared for the sheep. And Moses, he decided. Oh, he decided, I'm going to lead the sheep over here to this mountain. Moses decided that. His own, he decided. He had some sheep and he decided to lead them to the mountain. Right? Yeah. Okay. While 
he was sitting and the sheep were eating. <laughs> Moses, he recognized Life. something. Life. He noticed. I'm very nosy. <laughs> <laughs> What's that? Nosy. 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 Very nosy. Very nosy. My wife says, I'm so nosy. I don't like when she says that. <laughs> but it's true. That sets me free. So, when I'm, when I'm nosy, like Moses, he saw it, and he was interested in the fire on the bush. It was, but it was interesting. The bush, it didn't, it didn't. It was there, and it was burning. So he got up, he walked over to check it out, right? right? And verse 2 says, there an angel of the Lord appeared to him from the burning bush. And Moses saw the bush fire. The bush is on fire. Not. Not. So Moses, he's interested. Ooh. Wow. So he goes closer and closer and closer. Now, I remember God, he involved me. See, God does that. He makes us interested in his work. I remember I was, I was 10, and I had two friends. They were twins. Ty, Tyrone and Terry, twin bro uh, brothers, OK? So, I, uh, I learned that they had a, a mom who was deaf. And that was interesting. I was interested. So I met the mom, and she taught me finger spelling. A, B, C, D. I was excited. I was 10 years old. When I was 10, I never thought, oh, Later, I'll become a pastor <laughs> for the death. I never thought. Never. But I was interested in sign language because of my friend's mom. And then later, I was an adult. I was 38. And uh, uh, a friend at work, she came in and she would study, study, study. She was at Columbia College and she was taking in ASL English interpretation. So I was like, oh, interesting. I was 38. Again, I'm interesting. My past, I. Ooh, excited. Oh, I should go and learn too. But I was so busy. I was working, teaching in the, the hearing school. Can't go back to school. So one day, I'm studying the Word of God with my wife. And what happened? God. God says, learn sign language. And I tend to 
obey God. So I went out I, I, to the, the bookstore and I bought, bought, bought sign language books. And I learned, I learned, I learned. I was almost like 400 words. I, I memorized it. But when the deaf person, they came up to me, yeah. <laughs> what? <laughs> I didn't know any of the words. So the next year, the whole church was studying the same book. My wife and I, we studied the year before. The whole church and God Again, learn sign. Ah, I started, you know, going, struggling, struggling with God. I'm like, you know, I, I, I bought all those uh, sign language books and I learned, learned, learned. I, you know. <laughs> and God, he, he told me, he said, go back to school and I'm like, understand, I have two very young children. You know, they were barely walking. I'm like, I have a job already. Don't need another job. God says, you told me your life belongs to me. Is that true? Yes, yes, all right. If I do it, will you make it easy? I apply, you, they accept easy? Nothing, I heard nothing. Then later, I had an acceptance letter. I received it in the mail. I go the first day, and who's there? My best friend. I'm like, why are you here? I was reading that book. <sighs> that was my confirmation. I was like, I heard you, God. I heard you. And then later, I never even though I attended Columbia College, still, I wasn't thinking, I'll become a pastor uh, for the deaf. I didn't know how God was going to use me. Use me. My wife. My wife and me, the two of us. I didn't know how he used us. But, I knew that God, he told me himself to do it. So, I obeyed. First, God, he pulls us. How? He makes us interested in life. Something that he's interested in. The same. God is telling me, yes. I love the deaf. Will you love the deaf too? Whatever you want, I'll do. Whatever you need, I'll, I'll, I'll do it. Whatever. have to want God's heart. If you don't want it, God, he moved to the next person. Right. Ah, right. Don't miss what God has for yeah. you. Right. Don't miss it. 
It's for you. Yes. If you push it away, God will go to move to the next person. Will. You see the signs in the world? Yes. Yeah. These are the end times. There's over 25 million deaf and hard of hearing in America. In America. This morning, I went to Caputo's. I went to to, you know, chat with the deaf man there, and he didn't want church. Oh. I went, but he said, no thank you. <coughs> Maybe the next person will be the twelfth person, and he'll accept me. I accept your invitation. I'll see you. Received the first time. I had to hear it again and again and again. And then one day I real I realized <gasps> I have ugliness in me. I'm a sinner. I need Jesus Christ. I need to be saved from myself first. says that Moses says this is strange I'll go over and I'll see why this this bush not burning so he goes over and watches then God he speaks amen it says, when the Lord saw Moses come near the bush, he called, he called out to him, he called him. He says, Moses, he said, here. here am I. God says, don't come any closer. Don't stop. Your sandals, oh. take them off, off. The ground here is oh. old. God, your, your family, they worship me. Abraham, Isaac, Isaac, Jacob, they worship me. It means that, that Moses was not worshiping God. He belonged to Abraham's family, but not worshiping God. Moses, he was afraid. He didn't want to look. He hid his face. And the Lord said, I've seen my people. They are suffering. They're slaves in Egypt. I've heard them begging, begging, begging me to help them because of the uh, the way they've been treated. I feel sorry for them. I have come down. God says, 
I have come down to rescue them from the Egyptians. I have come down. Who's going to fight the battle? Who? God will fight the battle. Did God ask Moses to fight the battle? No. Look, look at the word of God. God never tells Moses to fight the battle. God only says, when the people are free, lead my people. <laughs> look, look. Many of you, you bring your fight to me. What am I going to do? I can't do anything. I can pray that God will do in your life. Yes, but many of you, you bring your fight to me, expecting me to. I can't. Only God can. Yes. Yes. It's, it's not my responsibility to fight your battles. That's his job. I am to lead you to him. I'm trying to do that right now. The way I'm leading you, when you share the word of God, when you share your testimony, you are saying, with your own lips, you're saying, God is victorious. You can't expect to fail if you're speaking, signing, God is victorious. You can't. You can't. You can't lose. You can only win. God is victorious. He saved me. told Moses, I will bring my people out of Egypt into a country that's good. With everything they need. Yes. Amen. He says, I will give them the lands of all the giants. All of these, the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Parasites, the Hivites, the Jubasites, all of them are giants. God says that He will their lives will will. Amen. Yeah. He will fight the battle. He didn't ask Moses, Moses to do it. You see, you thought God sent Moses to fight, but no. no. Only to lead the people to the promised land. Amen. 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 Woo! He says. Now go. Right. Now go. Amen. Amen. So God wants you, uh, it's, it's telling you today, now go. Testify. Share the gospel. Now go. Amen. Amen. So look, I'm going to continue teaching about uh, the giants, facing the, the spiritual giants. Look, this is the beginning.
I sent you to lead people to Him, not fight their battles. You understand the difference? Yes. Amen. Amen. Look. Amen. So, if you're afraid to share your testimony, it's not someone else's testimony, it's yours. You live through it. Amen? So share your testimony. Share the gospel. God saved me. That's the gospel. Amen? So share Jesus Christ. Amen? That's the lesson for today. Amen? That's good, right? We start with it's about God. That he fights our battles. Amen. We are to lead people to him. All right? And whatever happens in their lives, you are praying that God will for them. You can do it. Amen? Amen. Let's stand close and pray. Thank you. Thank you. We are having a hot blessing. It means we're eating together uh, today. You are welcome. Okay. You and your husband. All right. Close in prayer. Father God, thank yes, you for Lord. your awesome word. We ask that you write it on the walls of our hearts so that we don't sin against you. But we are obedient to all that you have called us to for your glory in Jesus' precious name. We ask your protection uh, over our lives and that you will uh, pour in the right words when we are uh, ministering to others, giving testimony or shame. Uh, sharing the gospel. We ask that you will pour in all the right words for your glory. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. 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 Bless you. Bless you. What?